Hello guys and welcome back to some more stasis. We are on a platform. There's been weird noises. I'm sure we'll figure everything out and everything will be absolutely wonderful. Let's go. The wall of entrance indicates the trams have been out of service for some time. I guess we'll head towards the terrifying noise that I heard. I'm in a tram Um, um, hello? How's it going with the mouse, guys? That was not a numb sound. Things are certainly getting pretty creepy down here. Hello? Anyone here? I don't want to miss items, but I guess I'll just follow the path for now. This area looks totally safe. Oh! The tower. I am pressurizing the raw materials containment tank. Is that bad? Yeah, come in. John! Thank goodness, I can hear This is you. bad, Taya, help me. You just disappeared. No radio, no PDT. Who the hell was that? It was Milan. Who the hell is Milan? See? Has a special project. He knew you. It's a big ship. And, um, I'm in a different division to him entirely. Oh, I don't lie, Taya. I only met him once. A real arsehole. I just want to get my family out of this don't goddamn trust place. That's the plan. <laughs> Okay, I guess we're getting out of here. You mentioned earlier that you lost my PDT. What's that? Personal data tag. Every person on board has one. Like animals. The tags monitor everything. Security access, food intake, location tracking. Everyone has a tag. We would use it to find my family. I'm afraid it doesn't work like that, Jay. Well, you said it did. Like hell it doesn't. If I'm tagged, then so are they. Except... I can only access your tag because the dot make scanners registered you. I've scanned for your family and I can't pick them up. I mean, are they on the We don't even know, John. That's the problem. Rescue. It only means that PDTs haven't been activated. But I still have an idea that might just work. Okay, well, what's the fucking idea? Just, uh, like, just, uh, just, like, wait for me to load in the next area. Tell me. close to an infirmary with a DNA sequencer. If you get your blood into the sequencer, I can scan the ship for familial DNA. And then we can find your daughter. Then... We can use her DNA to find Ellen. Exactly. Notice. Reserve power facilities are online. Backup systems are now enabled and functioning at benchmark levels. Oh, okay, so we need to find somewhere to put the blood in. This is like a security office. Let's have a look around, shall we? Dead security guard. This new guy, Anderson, is really something. Five minutes in the door and he's already asking what all the computers do. I like it. He's inquisitive, just like my boy back home. I'm glad he got put here in the shift change, but I'm disappointed neither of the two are ladies. I could use some female company. Okay, maybe Anderson is a little more confused and inquisitive, but his heart's in the right place. I can respect that, but Sarge, how in the hell did this boy get Sarge from Serato? Paul is just plain obnoxious. Food's not coming for a while. Fortunately, someone's been making moonshine. It's not the white oak whiskey from back home, but you don't come across much liquor in space. Looks like I've been moderating the supply, so to speak. Harsh and tried to arrest someone. Prick. Rations are in. Good thing too, the liquor wasn't keeping the crew at bay like it used to. The entire ship smells like shit. It's always been bad, but it gets worse every day. It's even a different type of shit, even once in a while. Beyond me. Groom Lake is on lockdown. Tremors, power outages, and several injured. Some guys left three days ago to repair a tram station. Haven't heard from them since. I can only fear the worst, and I don't want to wait around to figure out what's been going on around here. Paul and I have agreed on a solution, but Anderson isn't grasping it. I don't expect him to. I knew Anderson would have tr trouble coping. I knew he wouldn't understand. At least he went easier than we will. So they killed him? He saw so much in his short life, there just wasn't room for more. He'll never have a funeral. Nobody back home is going to thank him or want think of him or wonder what happened. I think Paul and I are the only people on this ship who knew his name. Maybe that's Samantha girl he was talking about, but still remembers him. Samantha's the girl from the, the thing, the fish thing. Her dog could be named after him, or maybe he picked her a flower and she tucked it under a book. I can barely read today, guys. I apologise. 
tucked it into a book. I haven't talked to Paul. He thinks I'm drinking, but I'm too preoccupied with Anderson for that. I figure I'm writing this for a reason. What if nobody ever reads it? What if this ship just drifts to the edge of the universe, dead and empty? If you exist, if you somehow stumble upon this, remember Anderson for me. He reminds me so much of how my son used to be. If you don't do it, nobody will. I don't beg. I never beg. But if you're a decent human, you'll know why you have to. Remember Anderson. Barely awake. Typing is an effort. Moonshine is not water. Hodgson had last word. So, yeah. See some pretty fucked up stuff happen here, as we already established. I don't know if we should unlock doors or not. Alcohol is being manufactured and distributed aboard the Green Lake. Security is opted to take an approach of non-intervention, as its effect on morale will likely present th prevent theft and potential riots associated with limited rations. However, security will regularly confiscate quantities of alcohol to moderate the supply. Rations have arrived and been distributed. Very few reported or evidential cases of theft. This can likely be attributed to the morale increasing speculated as a result of the distribution of alcohol. Specimen Samantha received for transport to Laboratory 18. This specimen from the cloning vats is contained in an iron lung. Transport needs to be arranged quickly. Specimen is scraping against the inside of the containment unit. Tremors have struck the Groom Lake power outages. We know that already. Four crew members have been reported missing while attempting to restore a tram station. We knew that already too. The corridor has been sealed and flooded with highly corrosive gas. Probably going to kill me at some point, Nat. Security cameras. Well, that's the highly corrosive gas. Nothing else seems to be moving. Okay. Was there anything else at the terminal? To figure something out here. Yeah, if we're gonna get in there, there's obviously a puzzle of some kind. That's fine, though. I cut his wrists. This is Paul Hodgson, the other guy. The whole shift change thing is kind of strange. Putting Ronald in security when he's obviously not equipped strikes me as irresponsible. Oh well, I'm sure I can compensate. I noticed we're out telling us to follow the new security guidelines this evening. I wonder what happened. It's only a few extra doors to lock, as far as I'm concerned. Easy enough. Food supplies are stalled and people are getting nervous. Someone's been selling alcohol. If we're in a spaceship so far away from the moon, swear to god, if aliens board the ship and pick us off one by one or something, I want to see Ronald go first. Uh, so there are such things as aliens in this world or not? Uh, let's keep going. The arse end of the ship just started exploding and jolted everything that wasn't bolted down. There's a goddamn pen stuck in the wall next to me. I can only imagine all the people injured right now, but can't leave on account of the lockdown. Lockdown or not, station B is fucked, so getting to medical isn't happening. Someone suggested that we could use a specimen transport track, but that's shady as hell. There's no leaving the security centre now. Staring, staring at Ronald's lifeless body as a fucking superior alternative to being ripped apart by whatever's outside. I hear screams. They're distant and muffled. Silence. 24 hours of silence. Not a scream, not a footstep. Still not a word from Ivan. The guy looked away from the atmosphere control room just before Ronald pulled the plug. I got bored and read Ronald's file. He had a lot of stuff running really deep. Maybe he wasn't ignorant after all. That's it for the water. Ivan refused to drink anything but moonshine. I tried my best to get him to have water. Stubborn bastard wouldn't hear it. He hasn't moved in a while. So this guy killed himself. And Ivan kept drinking because he was depressed about the other guy dying. It's a pretty fucked up scenario. Okay. Crew commons. Let's look around here. Once we know where Becca is, how can I get to her? There is another tram through the crew quarters. Once we know where you're going, we'll move forward from there. More trams. God forgive us. God forgive us. Is this smile down here or something? Can you hear a weird like humming? Because I'm pretty sure I can. Okay, yeah, baby jump! Our body lies slumped against the entrance bulkhead with his head hanging forward. It's almost possible to imagine him having a nap during a long shift. I wish I could do something. Help me. 
I'm getting sick of this bumps and scrapes bullshit. I didn't get this degree just so I could stitch idiots up when they accidentally stab themselves with a pen. I want to do fun experiments. Is that too much to ask? It's not like I want to be a mad scientist and sue new arms on people or anything, although human spiders would be cool. It's a miracle. Security somehow ended up passing me a container from one of the cloning vats onto me. It's labelled Samantha. They understand it's to be transferred to Lab 18, right? Oh well, no reason I can't observe it for a while. Right? I'll have my loyal assistant Miriam make up some good excuses for me. The creature is marvellous. The notes included don't say much, but I'm pretty sure that they don't have a fully formed spine when they package this girl up. It describes her as being just a tail. There are some other bones as well, but I didn't get mint major in monster anatomy. I wish I had though. You can't make this shit up. So he intercepted Samantha and kept her here, which sounds like a really fucking bad idea. The fucker grew eyes. I mean it. She did not She did not have these the last time I checked. They're rudimentary, sure, but they just grew. They're following me around. At this point, I'm going to take credit for Samantha entirely. I mean, they can't prove that there was anything more than some stem cells in that container the last they saw it, right? From now on, Samantha is mine. I can't wait to see what she turns into. Lab 18 is definitely getting suspicious and impatient. I'm running out of excuses for why I haven't transferred Samantha yet. I need Miriam to stall a bit longer. I read her PDA, so I know she wants to turn me in. She wants my job. Fortunately, I have a video of her screwing the guys from the lab. All of them. So there's my job security. This just got serious. The tremors knocked me over the counter and I twisted a muscle in my knee. It's going to be a long lockdown spent bandaging people up without any access to the full medical wing. Samantha isn't mine anymore. Some other poor fool can take responsibility for this one. I heard shill screams coming from the entertainment area. The first and last time I performed surgery, the patient woke up and started screaming her head off. Something about seeing your own exposed ribs really bothers people. Anyway, these screams were like that, only more intense. They're the screams of the dying. I've locked the emergency bulkhead. No sign of Miriam. I guess that's the emergency bulkhead. Jump scare? There's another door here. I don't see an access panel. It must be the secondary container. That noise is pretty unsettling, guys. Oh, it's that. I thought there was someone humming. I guess this is Samantha. I think this is it. Excellent. You need to get your blood sample onto the receiving tray. And uh, I'll do the rest. Do I dare look at the iron lung? Let's drop a save quickly first before I do. In case of sudden death. That's gonna be her. I'm not sure what I was expecting. <laughs> okay! <laughs> Well, that's Samantha. She's still in there. This is Miriam's one. Dr. Graham is up to no good. The weird pod accidentally arrived at our medical bay. It holds the most terrifying creature I've ever seen in my entire life. And he says it's beautiful. He wants me to find excuses for why it isn't going to be transferred to Lab 18. Good thing the guys there like me. I'll help him keep it for a secret for now. Although I might get his job if I could get him kicked off the Groom Lake. I'll keep an eye on what he's up to. Interestingly, the thing is growing all sorts of body parts at ungodly rates. The notes say it was just a tail and some flesh at some point, but I don't even see the tail anymore. What kind of fucked up experiments are we doing? Fuck! I'm locked at the medical bay and Dr. Graham has locked himself in there with that thing. We need to help these injured people. Insufferable prick. They want to use the specimen transport track to get the injured crew members to the medical wing. Even if the ship wasn't falling apart, that's a terrible idea. It's funny to see everyone frantically typing away on their PDAs. Who's going to read it? The surface of whatever planet's gravitational pull the lifeless groom that it gets sucked into doesn't care about your damn feelings. So everyone was knew they were fucked past a certain point, it looks like. But we're piecing together what happened here more. Sorry, so how do I get my blood sample? Blood out there, and then we put that on the DNA scanner. There we go. 
Okay, it's working. Receiving the genetic info. This is good, John. This is excellent. What Wait. the fuck was that? I guess we have to go to this window. Sure. There's something in there, along with my blood sample. <laughs> fuck. What the fuck was that? What the hell? What's you gonna that? talk to me at all here? I only picked up a flash in the scanner. A crew Didn't look member. like it. I wasn't a crew member. I wasn't even a person. It was, it was an animal. The upload finished. I'm going to start the scan now. Okay, cool. Tia, what's going on? We know on what's here? going on by the fucking things. They're clones. But I don't know any specifics. You have to believe me. Maybe it was one of those fucking things that ate Yuri. I grow plants. I don't care for man's pets. Just. just let me know when the scan's finished. Secondary containment is now accessible. Head through to the other tram station. We sure this is a good idea, considering how dangerous that looked, but oh, whatever, just keep going, I guess. Warning. Serotonin levels are abnormal. What does that mean? That means bad, right? Yeah, I'm not going in there. Entertainment block. I need a code to open this, unfortunately. Fuck. Oh, override lock and open door? John, wait. There's a highly corrosive gas in the Oh, I'm fucked. Shit, I've already cycled the lock. John! Atmosphere combat. <laughs> Death is <laughs> 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 I got fucked. That's cool though. Another day. Oh, okay, well, that helps. A lot. At the thickest sections of Tangle Grove, bulbous knots form a shape eerily close to that of a human body. As you listen, you can hear the rasp of laboured breathing. There's PDAs in here. Another long day in hydroponics. I plant a carrot today. This place seriously sucks, but I figure the longer I work for Kane Corp, the sooner they'll be able to replace the defective uterus of mine. So a lot of people here are working here, hoping they get new organs. Harry is protective and not in a cute way. It makes me feel a little uncomfortable. His attempts to protect my honour, his words, whenever Grant even looks at me are very unnervingly familiar, just like my ex-husband used to do. I'm not ready for another round of that bullshit. Half the ship's been on lockdown for two long weeks. Apparently some new scientists boarded today, so maybe they'll be able to resolve the issue. But what do I know? I make vegetables reproduce for a living. I have to admit, Harry's whole stalker thing can be great at sometimes. He's growing herbs for me so I can make tea. With all this new security bullshit, I wouldn't dare use some company resources personally like that. I've been pretending to like Grant just a little bit. I don't, but it keeps Harry on his toes. Harry opted to stay on the Groom Lake for another round. He was eligible to leave at the shift change, but he chose to stay. Gee, I wonder why he'd do that. He's a grown man, for goodness sake, but he's acting like a lovesick teen. He needs to stop fucking calling me Bell, though. It's Isabella, like the Queen of Spain. I keep hearing chatter about fungal growth spreading all over the Groom Lake. Let's hope it doesn't get here to hydroponics. I'd be devastated if anything happened to my precious celery. Spoke way too soon. I came into Hydro today to find everything coated in this strange fungus. Harry actually had a pretty good idea. What if we fought the fungus with genetically enhanced super mushrooms? No, nope, crossbreeding mushrooms did not improve things. Hopefully the emergency rations will get here soon. Unless people want to eat this portobello's from hell, that is. This shit is about to get dangerous. People have been beaten up. Some are even dead. We've seen a lockdown before, but it wasn't a mass panic like this. Will it be over soon? Or ever? 
Harry told me to stay in the sleeping block because it could be dangerous outside. You know. Sorry. Um... I lost my place there. I do, apo do apologise. You know, I have to take care of myself for 28 years without help from Harry. I think I can handle myself. I'm going to spend the final days of my life playing the helpless female. I'm not going to cling to Harry, even if he's the last human being I'll ever see. You can't expect anything from me. I wonder if he did. Oh. One, two, three, five, eight. I don't know if that's relevant to anything. Zero, one, two, three, five, eight. Probably should remember that for later on in case that is relevant to something. I guess this might be Harry's PDA. No. I couldn't be able to get out of bed today. Nobody came asking questions though, so that works. Sometimes when I wake up, I wait as long as possible to say my first word of the day. Then that word serves as the prediction of how shitty that day is going to be. Naturally, Isabella woke me up by the ask up uh, woke me up by asking if I'd rather fuck Grant or Hallery. I thought she was supposed to be some kind of feminist who doesn't need a man. Hypocrite. To answer the question, I'd need to do a bit of research. Harry will suffice for that. I guess I'm obligated to write about the ship locked down since it's life-threatening or something. I don't know why they even carry these PDAs. Seriously, I will never ever go back to read this shit. Groomlake got a 300% funding increase, and I have a feeling like we're doing some more shady bullshit with it. Welcome aboard the Groomlake, where as far as the universe is concerned, you don't exist. And as far as the board is concerned, you don't exist. Nothing actually exists. Humanities are going to flip shit when they finally figure that out. So Grant's gay. I knew I'd seen him checking Harry out. Lips are sealed. It's going to be a long and painful death if we don't get these rations soon. I might have to start murdering and eating my block mates. I'll start with Grant because he's the most meat on him. Harry is the last because I'm no hungry to put that mouth on that again. Okay. Hey, somebody's making some booze. Humanity has truly reached the apex of engineering. Space moonshine. It brings a smile to my eye and a tear to my heart. Get me some. Taste, 0 out of 10. Effectiveness, 10 out of 10. This stuff has to be at least 120 proof. I had to do something I totally don't regret to get it and it was worth it. The cure supply is running low. Food supply is high. I'm disappointed. Here I was thinking I'd be enjoying Moonshine Marinated Lego Grant this evening. Disappointing. At least I didn't starve. On one hand, something exciting happened. On the other hand, we're probably going to die or something. I have no regrets. Not even that thing I did to get the Moonshine. I'm literally thinking about it the last couple of days. And silly, I can't think of anything I regret. Not working up with Harry. Not pursuing music instead of physics. Nothing. It was all part of what made my life mine. Life carries on, no matter what. So I guess it's best to just be satisfied with what little I did accomplish. The universe swallows you atom by atom eventually. You know, I'm proud how far these atoms made it, from when they first got together to form Shelby Isaacson to where they are now. It's a lot of reading, that. A lot of reading in general. Sleeping carts, sweat and mildew waft off the unwashed linen. Torn up floor grating. So we can go down to the level below there. I think I'll check around up here first. Well, it's just one more room anyway, isn't it? Mother had a lung that was covered Hello? in fat. Father had a tongue that was also black. Is anyone there? They didn't care for us. We didn't care for them, and so it happened, again and again. Skin like a crocodile, and eyes like sin. The RG consumed them from within. This is really fucked up. Poor bastard. Looks like he didn't even manage to get out of his bunk. Grant. You know what's worse than being a janitor? Being a space janitor. The shit I literally have to put up with is unbelievable. I mean it. My job is to control the recycling of methane expulsion from human waste. Shitty is an understatement. Plus, I can barely understand my co-worker. I think he's Polish, but he only speaks Spanish. Isabella's been talking to me. I hope she doesn't have any ideas. I'm really not into that. Even if she was a guy. She's just so difficult to deal with. I think she purposefully leaves some shadow of a doubt that she might have some feelings for Harry. Joe so that it'll hang around. The poor guy's obsessed. It's creepy but it's also the teeniest bit sweet. I think Jupiter's finally done growing. She was such a cute little kitten. Now she's big and doesn't cuddle anymore. Harry's allergic. He thinks that I keep Jupiter around just to mess with him. Really, I don't. She gets in the way sometimes, but she's the only living thing that really understands me. I love that little kitten. Big kitten. 
Isabella smacked Harry straight across the face today. I think he called her a pet name to her face. I would have been flattered. Poor guy. Everything's so uneventful around here. Maybe that's a good thing? I've been trying to talk to Isabella to see if she's interested in Harry. I don't think so, but I want to make sure. It would help me sleep a little better. Interdepartmental pool to win 64 days of leave? What a joke! Kitchen, security and maintenance aren't even eligible when they're the ones that keep the ship running. Oh, wait. I guess that makes sense. The fungus shit is everywhere. It's already in the methane collection plant. Shelby's such a cow, she says she hopes it gives me cancer, but that's the way I could start over with the new organs, courtesy of Cane Corp, of course. I told her that there would be only one organ I really wanted, but that Harry was too busy following Isabella. Shelby says, oh, it all makes sense now. You go, girl, but I'm not a girl. Could have been worse. I just hope she could keep a secret. I don't want anyone involved in my business. The mushroom plan that Hydroponics came up with is not working. If anything, it's making life in the plant just a little more grueling. People have been complaining to me about weird smells coming from the vents. I swear it's not the plant. I can smell it too. Emergency rations! I snuck some food to Jupiter first. She was acting like a little loopy. I noticed just today that Harry is the most adorable way of stuffing his face. He always inspects whatever he's about to eat, for he takes a bite, then shoves as much in his mouth as he can. Ah, oh, the simple things. Power's out in the places around the ship. Hopefully the plant isn't next. That sure wouldn't end well. I haven't seen Jupiter since the tremors. I can only make assumptions. Oh god, I hope she's safe. I don't want Harry to get hurt in all of this either. He's such a little guy. I've been following Isabella around to get closer to Harry and make sure he's okay. I don't know what's going on, but suddenly it doesn't matter whether or not he could have cared about me. Those guys who want to work on Station B haven't come back yet. I've been trying to sleep as much as I can now so I can stay on my toes with everything goes to hell. I cried a little as well. Partly because of Jupiter, and partly for reasons I don't understand. I don't want to be a burden to Harry by telling him about how I feel. I know it would just confuse and upset him. I'm really hopeful that we'll make it out of here, but Shelby's pessimism is contagious. I don't know. Will I ever have another chance to open my heart to someone? I have to hope so. I just can't tell Harry. That's kind of sad. So you liked Harry but couldn't tell her. May as well read Harry's one as well. I'll never get used to this. Belle says she's fine, but I'm gonna keep an eye on her. I had a nightmare that Belle killed herself, so I checked on her just to be sure. Hope I didn't wake her. Grant would have checked on her. That dick. Doesn't know how to care for a lady. Not a lady like Belle. I sure hope nobody catches me growing these herbs. This base is so empty and cold, and Belle seems like she needs the comfort. I don't care if I get caught, but if I did get caught, Belle would know that I'd truly do anything for her. Belle seems super frustrated today. I stopped asking her what was wrong because she got really mad at me the other day when I did that. I feel like I'm making her angrier every time I speak to her. She's upset and I can't do anything about that. She spoke to me today. I'm so glad everything's okay. I lost so much sleep over her last night. If she only knew, she'd feel so special. Grant keeps bringing his goddamn cat into the sleeping block. I'm allergic and he knows it. I shouldn't need a shot of ephraim every time I go to bed. He thinks he's a badass because he's managed to sneak a cat on board. Belle probably thinks he's so cool. Why can't you see that he's a total dick? I decided to stay on the Green Lake so that I can be with Belle. I don't like it here, but I love her. Some guy in engineering says that there's a fungus on the ship. I wonder if it's poisonous. If it is, I bet I could hijack a lifeboat to fly Belle home. The fungi is all over hydroponics. I have an idea though. What if we engineer another invasive fungus to take out the alien one? I honestly don't think it'll work. I suggested it as a joke at first, but Belle thought it was a great idea. So now we have to. Grant's been following Belle and I everywhere. I know she thinks he can keep her safe, but I know he can't. He's so full of himself. I think Grant's cat died during the tremors and chaos. Good fucking riddance. The guy's been sobbing for almost a day now. Maybe now Belle will understand that he's not fit to protect her. I think I'd die for Belle. It's pretty much been established that something's running around and killing people. I'm gonna fight it when I see it. It'll only get to Belle over my dead body. She'll die knowing that I gave her my life just to tack a couple of seconds onto hers. That's pretty fucked up. So he was obsessed with her. Nothing of interest around here. I mean, these guys have been fucked, right? The corpse has been savage. Its leg is nothing more than a tendon strap bone. This one strangely wistful look his face. He's imagining escape into the cheery landscape on the wall. Looks like he was killed while he was asleep, maybe? Oh well, there was those creepy as fuck voices when we came in as well. That's always good. That's always good. <laughs> Anyway guys, we're going to go down the hole in the floor next time I guess and see what we can figure out, but that's the end of this episode. If you enjoyed, remember to leave a like and a comment and I will see you really soon. Thank you for watching the episode. Bye for now guys. Bye for now.